We've all seen the films. We have seen in movies that a man is caught in quicksand, begging people for help. But the more he struggles, the further down into the sand he is sucked. There are so many films featuring death by quicksand that Slate journalist Daniel Engbar has even tracked the peak quicksand years in film. In the 1960s, one in 35 films featured quicksands. They were in everything from Lawrence of Arabia to The Monkees. Now that's interesting trivia about deaths caused by quicksand being used in films. Yet the evidence that the more you struggle, the further you sink until you drown is rather lacking. What is quicksand? Quicksand usually consists of sand, clay, and salt that's become waterlogged, often in river deltas. The ground looks solid, but the sand begins to liquefy when you step on it. Later, the water and sand separate, leaving a densely packed wet sand that can trap it. Friction between the sand particles is reduced, meaning it can't support your weight anymore. And at first, you do sink. Do you know what quicksand is made of? It's actually a type of non-Newtonian fluid, which means it looks like a gel when it's still but becomes less viscous when an object applies pressure to it. Quicksand is made up of a mixture of sand or silt and water, which can be dangerous because it can trap unsuspecting travelers. Quicksand can form in many areas around the world where loose sand becomes saturated with water and agitated. There are two main ways it can form, through underground water sources or through vibrations like earthquakes that liquefy the soil. In fact, earthquakes can even cause buildings to sink by more than a foot. It is true that struggling can make you sink in further, but would you actually sink far enough to drown? If stumbling into quicksand makes you worried, don't panic. You won't sink in, at least not all the way. Quicksand is hard to get out of, but it doesn't suck people under the way it always seems to in the movies. Let's look into some research on quicksand by Daniel Bonn from the University of Amsterdam. Daniel Bonn from the University of Amsterdam was in Iran when he saw signs by a lake warning visitors of the dangers of quicksand. He returned a small sample to his lab, analyzed the proportions of clay, salt water, and sand, and then recreated quicksand for his experiment. Instead of people, they used aluminium beads with the same density as humans. In the Netherlands and France, researchers studied quicksand, a combination of fine sand, clay, and salt water. Despite its sensitivity to small variations in stress, quicksand thickens with time at rest. Would the aluminium beads drown? The answer was no. At first they sunk a little, but as the sand gradually began to mix with water again, the buoyancy of the mixture increased and they floated back up to the top. Bon and his team tried placing objects on his lab-made quicksand. If they were of density equivalent to a human, they did sink, but never completely, only halfway. Why then, if physics predicts that you don't endlessly sink further and further down, are there occasional tragic accidents where people do die, such as a mother of two who drowned in 2012 while on holiday in Antigua? The reason is that although quicksand doesn't continue pulling you right under if you can't get free in time, a high tide can sweep you. So struggling alone won't drown you. But we must be wary. If you want to free yourself without waiting for rescue or for the sand to liquefy again, then Bond's research showed that just to release one foot, you would need to provide a force of 100,000 newtons, the equivalent of the strength to lift a medium-sized car. Bond's team discovered that salt was an essential ingredient because it contributed to the instability of quicksand, causing these dangerous deposits. But then another team, this time from Switzerland and Brazil, discovered a quicksand that doesn't need salt. They they tested samples from the shores of a lagoon in northeastern Brazil. They found that bacteria formed a crust on the top of the soil, giving the impression of a stable surface. But when stepped on, the surface collapsed. But even then, the good news is that basins formed from this kind of soil are very rarely deeper than the height of a human. So even if someone did slip into the quicksand, they wouldn't drown. Dry quicksand, however, is another matter entirely. The quicksand effect means falling into a silo full of grain can often be fatal. In 2002, a case report was published telling the tale of a man who fell into a grain store late one evening on a farm in Germany. By the time the firefighters could establish which of eight tanks he was in, the grain was up to his armpits and, acting according to the classic idea of quicksand, was dragging him down. When he exhaled, the volume of his chest reduced, causing the grain to rush to fill the gap and making breathing harder. A doctor was lowered on a rope to give him oxygen, and a harness was placed around the man's chest. But soon, he was experiencing agonizing chest pain, and the doctor developed an asthma attack from the dust. 
The firefighters did come up with a clever solution, though. They lowered a cylinder over the man's body. Then, as they sucked the grain out with an industrial vacuum, the grain couldn't fall more tightly around him, and he survived. A fall into dry quicksand requires outside help as soon as possible. But what if you fall into wet quicksand and find yourself stuck rather than drowning? Wiggle your legs slightly to introduce water to the sand surrounding your foot and liquefy the sand once again. Stay cool, which may be easier said than done. Lean back and spread out to distribute your weight more evenly and wait until you float back up to the surface. Don't forget to bring your hat. What is quicksand floating? The density of quicksand is around 2 grams per milliliter. Human density, on the other hand, is just about 1 gram per milliliter. Sinking in quicksand is impossible at that density. You'd sink to your waist but no further. Further. Objects with densities greater than quicksand will float on it until they move. For example, aluminium has a density of around 2.7 grams per milliliter. A piece of aluminium, on the other hand, will float on top of quicksand until motion causes the sand to liquefy. During their research, the scientists placed an aluminium bead on top of a container of laboratory-created quicksand. Despite its larger density, the bead remained on the surface at rest. But then scientists started shaking the container. The bead stayed on top when they shook it only a little. But the ball descended to the bottom when they shook the container a bit harder. But why is escaping so difficult if quicksand becomes less dense as you strive? According to the study's authors, the explanation for this is that quicksand's apparent viscosity, thickness or flow resistance, increases when it liquefies. The rise is caused by the production of sand sediment, which has a high viscosity. The difficulty in moving this dense sand is the source of the problem. Water must be injected to dislodge the sand sediment, which needs great force. The scientists estimate that the force necessary to pull one's foot out of quicksand at a centimeter per second is the same as that required to lift a medium-sized car. What to do when you're stuck? If you step into quicksand, you'll only sink a little deeper than your waist. If you step into quicksand, you'll only sink around your waist deep. Some pressure would be applied to the chest, but not enough to create major problems. So how can you escape? Don't invite your buddies to tug on you. If they try hard enough, they'll likely tear you apart. Wiggle your legs around to do this. This creates a gap between the legs and the quicksand, allowing water to seep down and dilate, loosen the sand, he added. You can use this strategy to get out if you do it gently and gradually. The myth. A person will gradually begin to sink in quicksand, and movement will make the victim sink faster. But no amount of struggling will send you in over your head. Bond suggests that it isn't struggling that can get you into trouble, but getting caught in quicksand near the sea. Have you ever had an experience with quicksand? Or know anyone who has come across quicksand? Please share your experiences in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the post notification to stay updated. Until next time, stay smart. See you all.